What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's uh, Harry Haas here. And today I'm going to be doing a kind of morning process, uh, my mindset, uh, you know, type of video because I felt like I hadn't really made a video on my entire process. I felt like I had made videos on how to find strong stocks. I felt like I had made videos on, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of, I've made, I've made videos on, you know, stops, when I stop going long, how I use volume, every, every stock you know, long traders should avoid, front side versus back side, how I study, all that good stuff. But I haven't really done a whole, let's get into my head, let's do my whole type of process in the morning, my type of ideas, how I kind of trade type of video. So I felt like I would do one of those. Once again, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Even if this may sound like investment advice or seem like investment advice, it's not. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's kind of dive into it. But anyway, as I was kind of talking, like I haven't really done that type of process yet. So I, I just felt like this video kind of needed, needed to be done because I get a lot of messages from members. I got a, I get a, a ton of messages and, and people are, are just asking, um, you know, Harry, uh, what was your idea on this? How come you took along here? Does first bounce work in the pre-market? When are you more likely to do this? So I'm going to kind of talk about the strategies I use. And then maybe if you see something you like in this video, you can kind of look up because I, I, I literally have videos on all the strategies I use. And that's why it's so great because people can ask me questions. And I'll just link the video. And always remember, if you do have a question and I don't get back to you in the next five to 10 minutes, you can always search it up in the search bar. And maybe someone else has done a video on it as well. So I'd like to start this video off by kind of talking about how I tend to look at the market in the morning. In the pre-market, I've kind of found that there's more of a, a long edge. And the reason being is that the majority of the stocks that people are looking at, the majority of, of stocks that are kind of easy to borrow and uh, are doing a lot of consistent volume, they have a fresh PR out at seven o'clock, tend to start running into the, the market open. So we have a lot of stocks that kind of start running. Not all of them, of course, Nothing is ever, you know, 100%. But I'd say the ones that people are looking at, there tends to be more of a long edge on them in the morning. And when you hear Alex and Bao, maybe not necessarily Bao all the time, but when you hear Alex and, and Tosh and James and, and Tom and the bear talk about not trading pre-market, we have kind of narrowed down and, you know, Alex as well and everyone, we they've kind of narrowed down that they've they've taken some some pretty nasty hits pre-market as short sellers and they refuse to actually trade during that time frame because they feel like they don't have edge just like after 10:30 Alex looked at his statistics he found that after 10:30 he he himself did not have edge because a lot of these stocks tended to zombie up so he he stopped trading after after 10:30 and that's exactly what I think the pre-market is as well so for me in the and I'll get into the types of uh, you know time frames and and trades and strategies that I use but for the most part for me uh, from 7 to to 9:30 is a time where I like to use small size and I like to scalp um, again, tight risk, your stops are not going to work in the pre-market. And it's, it, I know a lot of people say it's more for kind of experienced traders, but I mean, I guess if you're looking to get your feet wet as a long trader, you can use kind of smaller size and just see how you do. Uh, I tend to have a, a good enough edge pre-market based on my statistics that that is something that I enjoy trading in the morning and I like trading in the morning. It's not necessarily something that, uh, happens every day or something that, uh, I'm always necessarily 
trading like I am the open. It's just something where if I see something and and I like it in the morning and I think I have a good line to, to take a trade off of, I will in the morning using smaller size always. And that's important to note because I'm not going, uh, if your max size is 500 shares, you know, maybe only try 100 or 200 at the start. And it's just kind of that, that sort of mentality and mindset. And maybe pre-market trading is not for you. It's not for everyone. I'm not necessarily an advocate for pre-market trading. I'm just saying that me, myself, I have found that I do have edge there. So I will take trades based off of lines and or first bounce or stuff like that, where I think I have a good enough edge to uh, to take a trade. Uh, basically 930. So 930, it, it, my mindset personally is I find that shorts have more of an edge at, at 930 uh, to 1030. And so my mindset is just going to be scalps. I'm not looking to to swing for the fences. I'm not looking to hit a home run. I'm not looking to, you know, take a stock from a dollar to, to nine dollars. All I want are small, consistent scalps every morning. And that's exactly what I usually get. So again, my mindset, uh, seven o'clock to nine. Again, it's more of a scalpish mindset as well. But if I do have a good average in the morning, I will hold for a little bit longer in that type of scenario. From 9.30 to 10.30, always scalps. I'm never looking to hold. I'm never looking for a home run. I'm never looking to shoot for the fences. It's always scalping line to line. I'll hit a first bounce. Uh, maybe, but for the most part, it's always, always, always just line to line scalps. And that's what I think it needs to be as a long trader in that this time frame, because short sellers definitely have edge. And this is a time where you can, you can make a lot of money scalping, but if you're, if you're not, if you're not careful, it's more so almost like backside scalping after a stock has moved significantly and we're starting to get on the backside. Well, everyone knows that we have a, a good few bounces on the backside and then it just gets kind of clobbered. So that's also something that I'd want to to kind of note and point out is that for the most part, it's just all mostly backside scalps in this type of scenario. And then from 10.30 to noon or even reversal time sometimes, I'm not a big 10.30 zombie guy. Most of my trading is done by 11 or 12. But sometimes if I do see a good zombie potential, I will stick around and stay and trade it. So again, zombie, I'm more likely to, to try and to be trying to push myself to hold a little bit more on these plays because I know they have some, some potential. They've been happening a lot more recently. It, it, it's really, I guess this one didn't kind of finish, but it's a fine balance between holding too little and uh, holding, you know, for too long. That was what I was going to say there. And for me, I guess I'm always trying to, to, to find that balance. And it's, it's a pretty tricky balance because the ones where you, where you sell right away, they end up going higher. And then the next time you're looking to, to, to hold it for higher, it doesn't go right away. So I think in my opinion, taking the profits when they're there, when they're given to you is, is never a bad idea. It's never, never bad at all. And again, look for those kind of easy to borrow SSR, float rotation, low float, those higher lows, that grinding action, not under death line. All those are great for you guys to kind of look for. And some strategies I use for zombie are dip and rip, line to line trading, uh, VWAP bounce, first bounce, all that stuff I'm kind of looking for. Again, these are just some kind of type of zombie trades that I that I was kind of trading. Um, these, this is just kind of line to line scalping for me. And you know, I mean, there's not really much much to say. I remember this day I was in chat quite quite a lot. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm basically just buying the pullbacks on the way up and and just kind of recycling on the way up. And when you have opportunities like this that start to run up like this and are doing significant volume. It's, I'm always looking to recycle on those types of plays. A CPAH, this is a classic, classic, classic zombie pattern. I believe this is in my video where we get a nice fade. It starts holding, starts grinding up higher, grinding up higher, grinding up higher, pushing all these shorts out from 3 to 285 that were short, hoping for a further breakdown, hoping for 240 and 225. Never got there. We squeezed them out. And so basically the recap on this is line to line will always work. Risk management is always key. Using less size pre-market if you do tend to attempt it. I know that we say don't trade pre-market, don't trade pre-market, but the majority of traders in here are short traders. And I believe significantly that short traders do not have as much of an edge on in and in pre-market as long traders do. But again, it's not always a guarantee, right? There's going to be stocks that fade at, 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 from pre-market on. There's going to be stocks that 
that kind of run from pre-market on. So it's your job to manage risk and to stop out where your stops are and to to always be aware and always kind of make a plan before you enter those trades. The open is safer for newer traders, I think. The opener zombie time is probably probably the safest. And the strategies do work. You just need to be disciplined and take profit when it's given to you. So anyway, that that's my video for, for today. And uh, I just thought that I kind of go over my mindset, some key stuff. This is something that uh, I guess a lot of people have been kind of asking me to do. Uh, it's probably my most requested kind of video topic for the week. So uh, yeah, um, this is my process. This is my strategy, what I kind of do. I'm always in chat. I'm always around if you want a message. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.